Okay. Yeah, ready for the recording? countdown? Oh. Oh. <laughs> that was recording. Five, In five. Four. Obi Trice. Three. Two. Hi, I'm Spencer. And I'm Christopher Walken. And this is The Itch, where we talk about video game news, releases, and other little topics. Uh oh. <laughs> the week is. Bomb drop. The week is 9 20 2014. How are you doing this week? Well, God darn it. <laughs> I'm doing okay until <laughs> fucking I read some shit, and then I watched some shit, and I watched some more shit, and then I read other shit. Oh, I got yeah. two different fucking things that I'm looking up right now. Yeah, you are busy with reading and watching, <laughs> and vice versa. Mildly condescending, just, like, <laughs> just a little bit. I didn't even think. Like, of, oh wow, <laughs> big words! <laughs> didn't know you were doing all that. Really? <laughs> <laughs> we can start out with some of the video game releases. We got PS4. There's a game called Flockers. Mother Flockers! <laughs> I was actually gonna look up what Flockers was, and then I said, nope, it's called Flockers. I don't care. <laughs> Let it happen. I, it's, I, the reviews apparently weren't very good, mm. just from what I saw. So it, <laughs> people aren't <laughs> flocking to this title, am I right? Support it's, monster. It's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, speaking of uh, advertisements, I am drinking a Quick Trip right now. And I'm drinking a Monster. Sorry, Leo. It's from his fridge. <laughs> oh. Sorry, buddy. Yeah. Um, monster. Uh, jolt of energy every time. And I'm drinking Quick Trip. Uh, <laughs> you thirst every time. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Everything you've ever wanted and more. Uh, <laughs> speaking of more releases, Fibbage for PS4. Whatever. The hilarious Bluffington party game. Probably not that funny if it has hilarious in it. It's probably like, <laughs> right, guys? This it's is funny, right? This is so hilarious. <laughs> and then it's like, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Who invited him? <laughs> Air Conflicts, Vietnam Ultimate Edition. Because just in case you weren't done with, you know, World War II or Vietnam, yeah. Air Conflicts. Yeah, but it's like PS2 era stuff. They fucking bring you another batch. Uh, and Kick Beat. To beat people and kick them. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Just keep going. <laughs> okay, Xbox One also has flockers. Oh, mother flockers. <laughs> and D4, Dark Dreams Don't Die. What? Dungeons and Dungeons and Dungeons yeah. and Dragons? <laughs> Dark Dreams Don't Die. Oh, shit, I'm an idiot. So they say D4, and then like, here's right. what it means. That's, I know, I, it, you don't, I took the exact same amount of time to figure that out. I was like, D4, that sounds like an interesting name. Dark Dreams Don't Die. That's a stupid name. I don't like that. <laughs> or that's like the new, like, <laughs> fucking Mighty Ducks. <laughs> right. <laughs> D4, oh. the return. Oh, my God. Emilio Estevez reprises this role. <laughs> this is, <laughs> that would be fantastic. Emilio! <laughs> uh, and then the PS3 had the Fairy Fencer F. That's from Nippon Ichi. I didn't look it up, but it could Nippon be interesting. Uh, and then Naruto Shippuden Ultimate Ninja Storm Revolution. Whoa, shit! Revolution... That's a long name. I and it, it also came out for the Xbox 360, so. What? Swag. Yeah. Oh, I got a little producer thingy going on here. Oh, shit. The producer who's at, in. And it, I just ruined it because he's. he's uh, in he California. Has, he, has his own, he has his own rendition of the monster uh, commercial. Can you go ahead and up, um, hold, the can, hold the can up of your monster? Oh. Okay. Monster, uh, release the beast <clears throat> in. Release the beast all in your mouth. Oh. <laughs> Release the beast. It's time to feast. Don't stick with the least. I don't. I don't think catchphrases have to rhyme. Monster <laughs> is full of yeast. Let's go. <laughs> Keep going. Yeast infected monsters. <laughs> it's the next horror film. God. <laughs> Good God. <laughs> now it's time for some news. Harmonix closes the rock band network. I'm sad. Oh. Wait, no, I'm not. There were 4,221 songs, including the DLC. But this brings up a good, uh, a good point, I thought. How much DLC is too much? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, that. <laughs> but, but, but I think this brings up another interesting question. is, As games kind of progress to more of an online, always sort of uh, personality, I don't know what I'm trying to get to with that, but as games start to like sit online more and they're not, not kind of standalone. Yeah, that little local co-op's kind of gone too. Or or there's no single player specifically. Right. Uh, Wolfenstein, looking at you. <laughs> looking at you. Um, but, but as it sort of happens, if you think about it, for a, a game like uh, Mario, you can just put the cartridge in to this day and play it, right? 
Yes. And you can play all the features that ever had. Well, then they didn't have online back then. Right. <laughs> not that. Hello? Not that we know. Not that we know. But uh, <laughs> but uh, then if you come to today, a lot of things are kind of parked online, right? Yeah. Destiny. So online only. Now you can see though that Harmonix has actually closed a lot of the features that they used to have. So what do you think that means for games going forward? Or is there is there no per are there are we gonna lose permanence in video games? You know, that's actually a good question. Yes, <laughs> we will. <laughs> Without a doubt. <laughs> it's literally like going, okay, um, like for instance, I have a ton of games that I downloaded yeah. for my PlayStation 4. That's like going, all right, fucking the PlayStation's cloud is fucking gone. And yeah. Like, Shit. And then now I can't verify the privileges for my games. Fuck me, right? That's, it's the same thing. Yes, I feel like we're, we are losing permanence. It's, everything's turning into a limited time. It, it would boost sales, like, theoretically, being like, oh, better get it while it's hot. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, That's right. Once the title's gone, it's gone. Unless they do an HD remake, because God knows, gaming industry loves HD remakes. Capcom. But, but could you imagine a world where, you know, we, our kids are, are playing video games, and we're like, Oh man, you should try The Last of Us. It was a great game. And then we go on there and like, God. The, then we go on the, we go on our server. Here, four year old, <laughs> <laughs> try Last of Us. It's mature themes. Four year, four year old will definitely enjoy it. Get the headshot. <laughs> Make sure you hit him in the head. Oh, that was a clicker that ripped you apart. <laughs> anyway, but but imagine you get to that point and you're you're trying to show your kid you know a classic game that you loved and it's like oh the server's down. <laughs> I guess you'll never play it. Well, fuck Connie. <laughs> I guess I'll have to try again later. Yeah. You know, to be honest, I would think that they would go like, they would go, um, so you have the era, right? Like where, like, you know, Nintendo and like Sega and shit like that. Yeah. Like, oh, you want to play Sonic? Oh, shit. You want to play, you know, Super Mario Brothers? Oh, cool. Or Super Smash Brothers, like the original. And then you go to, you're like, oh, I want to play PlayStation 3. Uh, well, <laughs> all those games are gone. <laughs> yeah, there's going to be a big gap. Yeah, there's a gap. And then it's like, well, we could play PlayStation 5. <laughs> you know what? It's, you know, twice as good as the PlayStation 3. <laughs> you know, generations later, they're going to be like, yeah. fuck no. Where's my last of us? Yeah. You know? And then you very educated Johnny. children. I know, right? <laughs> slap up Johnny. And be like, hey, Johnny, don't curse his pops. <laughs> I'm your no, daddy. No, I get it, though. I, I actually do believe that the permanence is um, disappearing. Hmm. Um, uh, a lot of games do that, or, or a lot of things do that. Like it, it happened initially when they got rid of backwards compatibility for a lot of consoles. Totally, yeah. Um, and then like, but the thing was, is PSN and Xbox, or, or PSN and yeah, Xbox Live, they're both like, all right, hey, we're gonna offer some of these games that we already have, but we're gonna give you the ability to go backwards compatible. Like I have a physical copy of God Hand, for instance, but it's not sold anymore. Like it's really hard to find. Uh, or it's a little bit hard to find. It's not really hard. Um, but you can just get out PSN. Yeah. So fuck it, right? Until PSN goes down. <laughs> right. And then it's like, well, fuck me. <laughs> so, but you, PS, or PlayStation 3 doesn't, if I remember correctly, doesn't work the same way PlayStation 4 does. Right. You don't have to re um, register your licenses on the PlayStation 3 as you do with the PlayStation 4. So fuck it again. I, I will always have God Hand. Two copies of God Hand. And I'm okay with that. This guy's got two of them. Yeah. Two got it. Zodiac it's <laughs> from the Final Fantasy developers are developing a multiplayer online RPG. The, Z the game is called Zodiac, in case that wasn't clear. They love that <clears throat> fucking word. <laughs> For uh, iOS and Vita. There's Zodiac weapons. There's the um, weapons of the... Or there's the uh, heroes of the Zodiac. Uh, fucking... I think that's Final Fantasy Tactics. Like... God, switch your fucking names, guys. That's well, like I don't know if you heard. They also they're coming out with the um the do, do, cloud. Do, what I got that. On. Oh, you got it. Oh, we gonna get to it. <laughs> I thought I didn't know you were gonna. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> right. I'm in your face right now. And my nightmares. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Yeah, that is coming. <laughs> but uh, man, y the, just these portable things are getting huge. Hey, now. you know what? What if it's like a turn-based online RPG? It, I think it's supposed to be. I'm in heaven. We have it, a market. <laughs> if it works, and I've got a Vita and a thirst for uh, turn-based video games, so I I've think got an iOS. Have you? By the way, this is side, but do you have iOS eight? No, I didn't get it. Yet. No. Is it out yet? Like yeah, officially. It's out. But yeah. it takes it takes like five gigs of RAM or five gigs to actually. Well, I guess I'm not getting it because my shit is. Pack to the brim. Just so you know what you do, and this is to everybody else who has uh, an iPhone that is watching this, so probably like two people, but uh, you download it off of iTunes, 
and have it installed from iTunes. And that way you don't have to clear up all the space. Thank you, sir. I will do that. So it's just a little tip for me to... Fucking iTunes, I haven't updated in centuries. (laughs) (laughs) So I have to do that as well. Interesting. Uh, (laughs) There's a game called... That's not biased. <laughs> Keep going. There's a game called Clang that was it, w- it was on Kickstarter. Clang, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, Clang, motherfucker. Uh, but it was shelved. Shelved. The creator is Neil Stevenson, and he wanted to create a historical, historically accurate sword fighting game. That'd be nice. Uh, but <laughs> apparently, it just wasn't fun. Uh, well, I mean, honestly speaking, sword fighting doesn't look anything like how we show it. Like, if you look at like real like competitive like sword fighting they're not like ha, ha. it's like well, what about like, uh <laughs> what about what the the sport oh uh, what fencing fencing um fencing is a little bit can get raw too you know like where you're just like well you guys are literally you're not even like parrying you're just, yeah, like, you're just like, trying to stab each like just die <laughs> you know uh, i would assume at some level of skill you go through that phase or maybe it's like at the max when you're at that upper uh echelon it's like hey just fucking kill the guy <laughs> just stab and get your points hope he doesn't stab you yeah to that effect. there's a meta game there <laughs> well yeah <coughs> i think that's interesting it, it, it actually got a lot of money on kickstarter uh, do you know how kickstarter works exactly what, i what fucking it, don't i'm just wondering what happens to a game when it, nothing happens they get refunded or i don't know if there's a refund on that i just don't pay attention to kickstarter like ever that's got a huge movement right now yeah it really is so God funding. Who that worked out? Oh, what is this? Uh, Shinra Technologies. I think you're about to mention this. I have to take over. <laughs> God damn. Yeah, Square man. Enix is coming out with Shinra Technologies. It's cloud-based gaming, and they actually have their own supercomputer somewhere. Somewhere. And it streams from there, so you can I basically. Hope they have more than one supercomputer. <laughs> <laughs> it's supposed to be just like a big room, I guess, and it just uses <laughs> uses all that. Better but, than uh, a fucking warehouse. But yeah, it's, you're supposed to be able to stream games, and it runs it like it's its own mega console. And it's weird. A lot of people are doing that. EA is, is doing that. Um, you know what? Sony's probably not even going to support that one either. You don't think so? Because they have the PlayStation Now. They have their own streaming thing. I it's have that. I <laughs> too many people. It's trying to figure out whether it should be a, a first-party streaming thing or if it's a third-party. Yeah, so well, some of, I guess some of the bigger publishers are just jumping on it right right now. Yeah, that's gonna be weird. So we'll what see. What is Sony gonna say? Ooh. Maybe I'll have that later on in another slide. Oh shit! <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> that almost sounded like a sneeze. I almost want to say God bless you. Right? I sneeze. Like, yeah. Huh? Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, microphone music. <laughs> Tetsuya. Tetsuya. You, you know how to say it. Tetsuya Why don't you read that? Because I don't know. Nomura. Apparently, I don't know how to say anybody's name in Japanese. So I'm just going to let you Tetsuya say Tetsuya who's famous for Kingdom Hearts um, 1, 2. Uh, he's, the direct, uh, he's the creative uh, director. Pretty much lead game designer. Um, so he was the director for Final Fantasy 15, uh, but he's stepped, stepping away from it uh-huh. and is just going to work on Kingdom Hearts 3 and some other projects that yeah, they Hajime, have. Hajime uh, Tabata. Tabata. <laughs> yeah, that guy. He's, he's taking over. His history was with Final Fantasy Type-0 and Crisis Core. Final Fantasy Type-0 was uh, Agito? Was it not? Yeah, I think that was the Agito thing. And Crisis Core is Final Fantasy VII. Um, freaking play Zack, I believe. And they're actually, I don't know if you knew this, but they're actually giving away Agito Plus in Japan for free. I think Coming yeah, because it was like it was available there already. Yeah, like here we I don't think we ever got it. No, so, I don't think we did. I mean, fuck yeah, it's coming on. Uh, you also um, a little side note. I don't know. Is this your only Final Fantasy fifteen? Yeah, specifically um, <clears throat> Final Fantasy fifteen um, is uh, going to be included. Or there's a code coming out in Final F- or on Final Fantasy Agito HD. Oh, to play the demo? To play a demo for Final Fantasy XV. Uh, Agito comes out March 2015. Um, and I got a funny story that kind of relates to that okay. from Square Enix. This is for you from guys. From Square Enix? Uh, a long time ago when I was, I guess in my last year of high school, a game called Dragon Quest VIII came out. And it had with it the demo for a game called Final Fantasy XII, which is the game everybody wanted to play. Mm-hmm. And I actually, you know, I was doing, it was after Christmas, I had some money, 
Because yeah. I did not have I, yeah, a lot of money at the I time. I got it at the same time, too. I got it for my brother <clears throat> for Christmas, actually. Oh, that's just a good present. Um, <laughs> but but I got... It really is. I love <laughs> that game. Bias <laughs> It's turn-based to the max. <laughs> that is old school as they come. That you can get in the newest <laughs> stuff. But uh, So I got the game, and I'm like, oh, I can finally play Final Fantasy XII, a game I've been looking forward to so much. And I played Final Fantasy XII, and I was like, eh. <laughs> I actually liked it. And then I played Dragon Quest, and I was completely blown away by how fantastic of a game that was. And then eventually later down the road, I got Final Fantasy XII, and I was like, eh. <laughs> it was like the, you get it, you're playing it. So what do you think about it, hun? Eh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was just the most obnoxious noise. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> I just sneezed. <laughs> Right? Oh. <laughs> but anyway, oh, shit, whatever. Oh, shit. So I, I think everybody bought that game for the demo, and then they ended up getting like a fantastic game that I think personally is way better than the game that they really bought it for. That is subjective. Subjective. <laughs> I but think I think Dragon's Quest is a good game, but I thought um, Final Fantasy XII is underrated. Uh, one of my old roommates thought the exact same thing. It was his favorite Final Fantasy. Because, and the weird thing is, the main character is not really the fucking main character. Right. It's all the other guys are the main character. He's like, yeah, fuck it, let's do it. <laughs> like, he's the guy that's, or the other guy's like, we need to save the world and shit. Interesting. But it was, it's Ivelisse. My brother brought up a good point about that. Ivelisse, um, stories about Ivelisse, so like Final Fantasy Tactics, mm-hmm. Tactics Advance, all that shit, are more political. And stories that uh, that are without it, so like Final Fantasy VII is about, oh, save the world. Final Fantasy VIII, fucking save the world. Final Fantasy IX, fucking save the kingdom. Uh, Final Fantasy X, save the fucking realm, you know, from my fucking dumbass dad. Uh, Final Fantasy X, too. Oh, my God, I love them. Get them back. <laughs> you know, Final Fantasy XI was, I didn't think it had Evilise. I don't know too much about XI. But, yeah, it's if it's about Evilise, it's fucking about, like, you know, political shit, propaganda, all that stuff. It's more, um, <clears throat> what's what's the term? Uh, intimate. It's more intimate. Well, that, I mean, I don't want to branch off too much into this, but I personally, and this is just personal, I really don't like it when there's politics in a fantasy game, or in, in fantasy in general. And the, the biggest example I have for that is the Star Wars saga. It's one of the main reasons, one of the main reasons I don't like one, two, and three. Oh, wait, the movies? Yeah. Oh, whatever. Yeah, I mean, the first one was literally just about, hey, trade fucking roots. Like, yeah, exactly. Like, the second <laughs> one the second one was a little less political, and the third one wasn't really... I mean, the second one had the elections and shit. Right. And the third one did have politics, but it was just more about, like, oh, fucking Anakin's acting up. Ooh, I got dark side points, <laughs> yes. you know? Yeah. It was, did he young, just kill a child? You know? Youngling. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry. He's yeah. killed youngling. The younglings. <laughs> I love that, that they just had to make up names for everything. They couldn't just say, like, a young kid. Like, he killed a bunch of kids. Yeah. Couldn't say that. They had to call them younglings. <laughs> it's got to be something. Anyway, rant over. We'll, we'll skip over that. Um, Another day. <clears throat> video games for ice cream. Ice cream? In Marin County, California, uh, the, for Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Oh, my God. Here we go. Fuck. Yeah, everyone's got a month. <laughs> no, not even that. Oh, mm. fuck Black History Month, by the way. <laughs> I'm black, I can say it. So <laughs> I can't. <laughs> uh, you, uh, uh, I forgot who... <laughs> oh, shit, hit my nose. I think it was a bunch of parents and some, some uh, attorney type of thing are having a big promotion where you trade in your violent video games and violent toys for Ben, <laughs> ben and Jerry's ice cream. How interesting is that? That's fucking stupid because you're associating two things. If I turn in, uh, what's a violent video game? God, I can't think of any. There are oh, almost shit. like there's none, no violent video games. If I turn in Call of Duty, <laughs> okay. you know, Modern Warfare, which was the peak <laughs> of Call of Duty. So it was an amazing <laughs> game. If I turn that in for Domestic Violence Awareness Month, it has no correlation between the two. Guess what I'm doing by association... Er, I'm essentially associating it with domestic violence. Like, it's domestic violence is like, as bad as it sounds, like, understand, it's like worse than normal violence. <laughs> you know <laughs> what I mean? Like, okay, two guys beating each other up. All right, fine. Um, two guys that are married beating each other up. Domestic violence. And it's that much different. Like, it's clear as day. It's like that different. <laughs> and, but it's a hundred times worse because it's your spouse. Now, the thing I don't agree with is, yeah, you are a Soviet. You have trade-in violent toys. Define violent toys. What, I have a spawn collection? 
that's like worth a thousand dollars, but I'm really fiending for some Ben and Jerry. <laughs> that Rocky Road is legit. I'm gonna trade it in. What kind of bullshit is that? That's a stupid ass idea. Whoever's the fucking well, and plus weird. think of this though. You know, you know what always bothers me about these things? It's not violent movies. It's not violent books. It's books, books can be books can be violent. Oh, dude! Like There's crazy. a book called The uh, Fifty Shades of Grey. That's I've never pretty, heard of it. Pretty gross and, and all that kind of stuff. I mean, I'm not approved, but I mean, <laughs> but but the book is clearly a sexual it's like, book. It's like white girl sexual. <laughs> right. Exactly. It's, it's terrible, but it's true. But no, it, it, you're absolutely right. And, and it's it's. I mean, do you want them to throw away those books? Because books can be violent. Don't think that just because they're not reading something. Oh, because it's your fucking imagination. Right. There's a lot of implication going on in books. Every, every, yeah, I mean, the author doesn't have to say it. That whole thing, the whole war against video games just bothers the hell out of me. It pisses me off. It's like we're the same medium as everything else. They're just entertainment. We're just worth more. Read it. and Yeah. Oh, totally. <laughs> <laughs> but we got to get, we gotta get beat down. Yeah. So... I won't be getting ice cream, but I also don't live in that county. So <laughs> that's like many miles away. Uh, Unity Pro is free for PlayStation developers. Fuck, make me a PlayStation developer. I need Unity Pro. Do, would you know how to use it? <laughs> Fuck no. You'd learn though? I would learn. It used to cost $1,500 now it's, er, and then it, or $75 a month and now it's free. This just seems like another plus for Sony in that they're really trying to push for that market that can that kind of make their own. That right. all that shit. I think, I think PlayStation or Sony realizes that they're, they, I don't know if I talked to you about this or if I talked to my brother. They have so many, they bought all their fucking IPs. Right. Uh, Microsoft has. Uh, Sony has, that's you, I think. Sorry. Um, no, you're good. Um, Sony made all of their IPs from their God, from their companies. <laughs> that's what I'm thinking about you know? them. <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> but that's the thing that's interesting to me is that they're they're like, okay, well hey, let's fucking make it easier. They work something out to establish unity. Granted, there's more than one way to make a video game and more than one um, tool to make, you know, you JavaScripting, there's some there's a new one C There's I can't think of the new one. Um, or not new one, but one I hadn't heard of. That's good. That's very good. That's it's nice. It's Ruby scripting. Ruby? That's for like RPGs and stuff like oh, that. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, there's that too. There's tons <laughs> of shit. <laughs> there's tons of shit. And yeah. It's just great. And Blazer is like, I want to use this shit. <laughs> right? Fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> I got to stand away from the mic. If I, do it. <laughs> I can't be like yelling in there. Oh. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. So they, yeah. I think that's an interesting uh, uh, plus if you go to PlayStation to I make know. games. Respect Sony. I'm not a fanboy. I'm a fan of games, but that's yeah. pretty smart. Speaking of PlayStation, PlayStation oh, yeah. Now is an open. <laughs> and here's how you know I'm not a fucking fanboy. I think PlayStation Now is stupid, but whatever. What right now? You think it's stupid? I think it's dumb. Okay. B- because the main reason why is look at the fucking prices. Blockbuster well, was cheaper. <laughs> what the fuck? PlayStation Now allows you to download PlayStation 3 games for different time frames according to how much you want to pay. Yeah, it used to be like one was like a day and then it now these are more like specific. It yeah. It used to be like a day or 30 days a week. It's a it's allowing you to do 4 hours, 7 days, 30 days or 90 days and you have to pay more depending on what you want to do. I think I think they might reduce it it was like $3 for 4 hours, but it depends on the game, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I think so. Um, Which is just confusing. <laughs> I would think for an RPG that they would sell it at a lower price. Just because fucking you rent Dragon Quest Eight. Yeah. What are you getting in four hours? Past the opening. <laughs> Welcome. <Yeah. laughs> You've left Trodane. Yeah, right? It's like, <laughs> shit, I don't even have everybody yet. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where's Jessica? <laughs> yeah, get her over here. Uh, but I think I think it's an interesting concept. I'm curious to see how it picks out. I know Square's doing a similar thing with one of their. That's the thing. What are they gonna fucking say? Yeah. So hopefully, it, hopefully it works to some extent. I mean, I see I see some games benefiting from this, and other games, yeah, like an RPG probably would be kind of dumb for yeah, this. A shooter would be great. Yeah, yeah. You just want to play. You got a, a bunch co- of friends over. You want to be like, hey, here's fucking. PlayStation Move shit, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like oh, fucking here's a four year old, go play, you know, yeah. makes more sense. Yeah, I think that would be kind of cool. It's just an untapped market, and everyone's just trying to make their fucking their mark on it. You know, I've been avoiding talking about Super Smash Bros. At, on these things, but it's officially like a big deal now. Yeah, Super Smash Bros. has always been a big deal, man. 
Uh, it's a big community. <clears throat> but it, like, it seems like there's news every week about it. Like, oh, here's the new character, and you can now do this. And so I've kind of avoided talking about it just because it's kind of beating a dead horse. <laughs> but uh, it has officially, it has officially come out in Japan. What? And they sold over a million units on launch day. A goddamn million. Yeah. <laughs> Which is Which, it's a big deal in Japan. It's Not a big, a big deal to us, but it's a big deal in Japan. I think Super Smash is a big deal here. Well, no, I, yeah, Super Smash Bros. But selling a million units is not necessarily the biggest deal for us as it is for them. I believe in the article they only had two other games that did that, which was like Monster Hunter and uh, I think there was three. There was Pokemon, no, it was Pokemon, Monster, Monster Hunter, Hunter, and there was one more, and I don't remember what it was. No, it was a different I'm one. I'm telling you, it's I'm gonna look it up. I, I, okay, we'll, we'll figure that out after the show. Do it off the record. Yeah. Do it off the record. <laughs> but I'll. I'll uh, Put it in the next show. Do it off the record. <laughs> but uh, the, also, I wanted to announce that the demo has been released here. Woot, if you haven't played it, you really need to jump on there and download it. I, yeah, I downloaded it. Actually, when I, was look, when I was researching all this, I found it. I was like, oh, okay. And I typed it up. And then I uh, pushed my keyboard away and ran to my, <laughs> my, my, my bed where my 3DS sits. And I downloaded it. Let's give it a shot. <laughs> and it's great. I love it. Mm. It's fantastic. Uh, also, uh, just a note since we're talking about the subject. In Japan, there's a game mode that Peach has an unfair advantage in, and there's a kind of a glitch that happens, and a bunch of players got banned. Yeah, for using turnips. For using turnips. <laughs> Which is one of our abilities. It yeah. It's down, uh, down B. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Picks one up. You can toss that, motherfuckers. So, yeah, I, I guess a bunch of players got banned for doing it uh, wrongfully, so they're probably going to get uh, reinstated at some point, I'm assuming. Yeah, uh, Nintendo actually apologized. They're like, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry about that, guys. Yeah. Um, yeah, they... Uh, they they do a one day ban on you for playing in the uh, was it for for honor for honor or for like bragging rights I forgot the diff- for fun and for um, like it's like essentially the two game modes are like for fun and for seriousness yeah. most all the the stages on like the serious version are like final destination like they're fucking flat so there's no like platform advantage and stuff like that which that's debatable if you want to call that an advantage um, uh, and and really subjective and it depends on the fucking uh the characters the matchup yada yada anyway um two many factors so with with this apparently the turnips you can't have items in that mode so i think it might have been the turnips where they are technically an item and they would flag yeah i think so and they'd be like you're using weapons yeah yeah like you'd win if you won like using it they're like oh one day ban. It's like <laughs> fucking serious. <laughs> so, so I, yeah, I think that's a it's that was a bummer for those guys. Sucks. But uh, yeah, that's gonna be a big deal when it comes out here. I'm I'm definitely getting it. I don't know because well, I don't have Wii U, but also because I heard from a lot of people that it's slow, slower. So it's not like melee, which is the more tournament level. Um, that and Project M, which is a modded version of Super Smash Bros. Brawl, which takes out like all the the randomized like slipping and tripping and <laughs> makes it faster, gives them like different like skills and puts in like different characters. Like Roy, for instance, is in uh, oh. is in Project M. That's cool. Um, I think was Mewtwo in Brawl. I didn't really play much Lucario of Brawl. I played a lot of Melee. But yeah, I didn't play yeah. a lot of Brawl. A lot of people played a lot of Melee, and like that still has a tournament scene. <laughs> like what, like 10 years later? That game was so good. <laughs> yeah, it was fun. So, um, so yeah. Uh, it's When it comes here, it's debatable if it'll have the same scene as Melee does. But they might be moving in a slower, but... Like Street Fighter, if you compare Street Fighter 3rd Strike to Street Fighter 4, Street Fighter 3rd Strike is incredibly fast. Fast-paced, really, like, elitist when you're good at it. Like, you really, it's really hard to... To um, to lose if you're if you're good at it fighting against someone who sucks. If you're playing Street Fighter Four, different story. It's a little bit of a slower game. Uh, it's easier to see everything that comes out. The game gives you an opportunity. It makes you feel like if you got hit, it's your fault. Um, at least when you're playing live. If you're playing online, fuck that shit. <laughs> On some days, fuck that shit. <laughs> you know, butter churning motherfucking Zangiefs that just want to hit you with the SBD, whatever. But a bunch of jerks. Yeah, man, dicks. dicks. So, but yeah, no, we'll we'll see what happens. Hopefully, it uh, it sells well here too, which it will, and gets Nintendo back in everyone's like good side. Yeah, uh, PewDiePie, he's bringing his broken podcast to MLG TV. Yeah, because that's with him and uh, Simon Toast Ken, right? You know, I don't watch these people. 
I I watch PewDiePie and I actually respect the guy. I don't watch like every single video or whatever. Like I was actually watching him this morning. He did some video about like some synced up like face thing. I don't watch him like, oh crap, what's PewDiePie doing? Um <laughs> He's, he, I'm subscribed to him, mm-hmm. but it's like only if you play certain things. Like I watched him more when he did the infamous Second Son um, playthrough because I beat it when the game first, or not when the game first came out, but I beat it like three days after and I really liked the game and I just wanted to uh, get another person's opinion. He was late to the party, of course. He still did it. Um, he still like went ahead and like played it. He really enjoyed it too. Um, I just think it's a great game. But yeah, the Broken is... Uh, the reason why it's capitalized like that is because, you know, bros or whatever, his uh, um, subscribers, or maybe he's talking about him in general. And then Ken, Cinnamon Toast Ken, who's another uh, YouTuber, I, b- I believe, who actually goes with him on this stuff. And they, like, oh, okay. play games and all that shit. So that's good. And well, like I guess he's these, uh, these you know, streamers? He's a streamer? Yeah. I guess he's, he's the most popular YouTuber. Right, right. That's yeah. what I keep hearing. He's got, like, what, I think 40 million subscribers now? Yeah. He makes about, like, roughly, like... Like three million or two million a year, wow. off of just this. Wow, that's incredible. Pretty nice. Yeah, well, he's doing very well, and I guess uh, maybe streaming is kind of breaking into the mainstream now. Well, he he kind of does. I think whatever he does, a lot of people are going to follow mm-hmm. because he does have a bit of a younger audience as well as like an older audience. Like I would say, like more in the twenty uh, twenty range, tw- yeah, twenty year old, twenty five, whatever range. So. <clears throat> Um, and he actually, he's the reason why uh, people went and bought Skate 3 again, because he did a bunch of plays on it. He, uh, he is uh, unofficially, like we don't know for sure, but it seems like he is the reason why people got Skate 3 again. Because it's not the best Skate. I think Skate 1 is. It's just me. Um, but THPS for life. Fuck that shit. <laughs> <laughs> fuck Tony X Pro Skater past, uh, what, 4 well, yeah, I'm down for that. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, Underground was like, what? Underground 2 was like, what? Um, I'm 1, 2, and maybe 3. Was it like Project 8, was it? Oh, I, that's what it was I was way gone by then. <laughs> yeah, right there. You, know, <laughs> you know, and sk- it competed with Skate by then. But um, anyway, anyway, anyway. Um, that's good. That's nice that they're actually going about and trying to fucking... I wonder where that's going to go in the future. Twitch is now on Chromecast. Ooh. Yes, our producer just said, oh, fuck. Oh, my God! So, we've just begun our top story. (laughs) What? What's wrong? My thing said 11 hours after it was released. I mean, we can play it. Uh, Yeah, I read it. It said, I, I can't remember. It was Prime something. I think that's the name of the group or something. Whatever. Uh, the, uh, our top story today, <laughs> we're kind of having a sidebar, but <laughs> we're going to talk about the game Destiny, probably the biggest release in the last couple of years. It's just been monumental. Mm. A lot of promises and a lot of, uh, well, we'll see. We'll get into all that. Uh, it's a lot of shit. <laughs> I'll get into some of the financials. Within five days of its release, it made $325 million. So they recouped their costs at, at, and then some, obviously. That's good. And which is usually Greenlight's a sequel. <laughs> <laughs> Not even recouping <laughs> Greenlight's a sequel for some games. Yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, let's get a fucking, what was that game called? Um, shit, it'll come to me. Keep going. Uh, and it shipped apparently $500 million to retail. So we'll see how all those go. But I'm sure they'll be sold. <laughs> uh so it's doing very well. Let's put that into perspective immediately. It's doing fantastic. Yeah. Um, in my humble opinion, I, they marketed it enough that it would have it didn't really have a choice. But yeah, I mean, like, the there's no way it was gonna fail. You saw the live action trailer, right? <laughs> like that shit was sick. Like I was yeah. like, oh, this is nice. Before the game even came out, I was like, yeah, I'm so happy I pre-ordered. This. With with all the marketing, and I'm, I would I would say that the game didn't really have a chance to fail. So I'm gonna throw that out there. Yeah, because everyone wanted. It. Yeah, it's, it's like the one game everyone had to have. Consciously, you were like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, they practically sold the console essentially, if not Titanfall for the Xbox or something like that. But uh, uh, now let's get into the nitty gritty on the the on this game. When it was released, so meta bad. scores were not that impressive. They weren't bad. I think everyone forgets that a five is average. Yeah. <laughs> I, I want the world to kind of understand that because something didn't get a 9.5 or a 10, 
doesn't mean it's a bad game. Yeah. It got about maybe, I think on average, like a 7.5, a 7.8 or something on a meta score. Yeah, it's like between eights and uh, eights, eights and sixes. Yeah. Um, so again, definitely well above average. Um, but then again, these scores aren't necessarily reflective of the actual game. And I know you have some heat on this, so I'm going to let you kind of oh take God. over. Oh, God. Oh God! He, he, to, also, to put into perspective, I have not played this game. I've played the I, shit out of it. I don't play first-person shooters, uh, and I also I don't know. It's just not a big thing for me. But I will let uh, Justin take over. Well, the biggest thing about uh, Destiny that people mix up, and this is the thing I hate. Okay, so the gaming. This kind of ties into the whole thing about um, that we'll talk about in another video about the gaming freaking crash and all that shit. Um, two, we probably have two different opinions on it. But we'll get to that. It's more interesting that way. Um, <laughs> but, 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 when it comes to Destiny, okay, here's the thing about Destiny that I respect. There are things I did not like about it. And I'll go through both, and then I'll go into other shit. Um, things I didn't like about Destiny. I felt that the story was uh, not as strong. I felt like the writing could have been better as well. It's not terrible, and there's always room for improvement because this game is already a franchise. It's going to be a franchise. Um, <clears throat> even if their numbers dwindle off, they will more than likely recoup when they make a Destiny 2 mm -hmm. unless they really fuck up, unless they do some Microsoft-level fuck-up. It will always do that good, or it will do roughly the same. Now, <laughs> I mean, look at Call of Duty. I mean, come on. Um, the other thing to look at is... Um, I, didn't, I didn't like the writing. I didn't like the story as much just because I felt like it was relatively absent. They want you to like log on. It, means the, it doesn't mean the story's not there. There is a story. It's just um, a lot of people don't want to have to look online to figure out the story because every time like you do stuff like, say I kill 100 guys on the moon. All right, well, I unlock a grimoire uh, card. Which I, tells a little bit of story. I was told there was like an app or something that people could use to help explain the story. There you go. You're which on your phone so, fucking so, so much already. Which is so bizarre to me. But anyway, continue. I mean, it's it's they're just trying something different. Yeah. Um, those are the main things I didn't like. Uh, also, it did feel a little repetitive. When uh, Up until you hit 20, it's a little bit repetitive. A lot of the same stuff happens. I joke with it. Like when I'm... I'll be on the mic talking to random ass dudes when I'll go to like this thing and the ghost is like, well, I need to unlock it. And there's always three ra waves of enemies. And it's like, oh shit, there's three waves of enemies. Fuck. And it reminded me of like Super Mario because you always have to hit the guy three times. Like yeah. if it's a boss, Super Mario Sunshine, Super Mario Galaxy, it's always three hits and then they're dead. So it's, it, I mean, it's more repetitive in that sense. All right, we got three waves to deal with. Okay, cool. Oh, I almost got it when the first wave's like done. The second one. Oh, man, they rerouted me to Friendster. And go to the third one. Oh, fucking got it. All right, let's go through the door. Oh, after everyone's dead. Cool. Thank you. You know, take your time, fucker. <laughs> you know what I mean? That kind of sucked. Um, yeah. Minus that, those are the only three things I could say about it. Now, here's the other thing. I loved, I loved the game. I think it's a great game. And here's why. I think it's a great game because, one, I'm starting to like Bungie. It's not that I hated them after Halo and stuff like that. It's just Halo just felt really simple. And that's what a lot of other people uh, going into this felt like it was supposed to be like Halo. And I'll get to that. Um, I liked, I, I liked uh, Bungie's take on it. I like the art design. When I get new gear and I can, there's like shaders that you can get. And you can actually, like they make your clothes look cooler because you have these different like color designs and stuff like that. I'm rocking orange and blue, right? Apparently Nyx. And, <laughs> <laughs> but it looks good the way they have everything set up. Like it looks nice with your gear. So it's like, why wouldn't I wear this? You know, it's cool. Um, there's other different like shaders and stuff that you can get, but that's cool. Uh, another thing that's that's cool about it is uh, I actually like the loot system. It feels rewarding when you get your loot. It's all RNG, so it's random number uh, generator. You could get... Uh, a good gear, a good gear. You could get average gear. I also like the sense of progression. If I'm doing a story mission, I am either leveling up my skills, leveling up my character, or leveling up my weapons, or leveling up my reputation. In some instances, too. That's great. That's four different things I'm doing just by shooting people in the head. What's not? How can I not like that? And that's what's rewarding the players, and that's what makes it feel fun because you're going around and you're killing these guys. Yeah, it may seem a little monotonous sometimes. Like uh, maybe they'll make you do like a bounty where it's like, oh, you've got to kill like 
50 guy or 20 guys using a fusion rifle, which shoots like it shoots like five round or six round burst. It charges, shoots six round burst. You have to kill two people in one shot. Little annoying, not gonna lie. I never do that bounty. I've done it twice. I'm like, fuck this. <laughs> but it's those, it's like, it's, it's giving you a little bit more boost because you get like a ton of experience for it afterwards. And it's, it's like, it's, you feel like, all right, fuck, yes, thank God, I'm done. All right, let's do another one. Let's do something else. It gives you that sense of making a comeback. Um, the other thing I like about it is it's marketing. Uh, the way the game was marketed, which, <laughs> I, and I'll get into this, every fucking reviewer who gave it a low score did not understand how the game was marketed. And it just drives me up the fucking wall. Um, I, I will go off and say this, like for a fact, any person who submitted a review for the game before the first raid come out, it came out, regardless of if it was good or bad, is wrong about the game. Okay, because that raises the question, when should you put a score in for a game? Oh, I totally agree. Any, any review, that, like, it'd, it'd be like releasing World of Warcraft and then the day after saying, eh, it's kind of boring. Yeah, all I did was <laughs> kill things. Well, you didn't really get the whole experience of the game. Yeah. So you didn't really... You don't know what you're talking about. I gotta kill wolves? Yeah. Forget this. What this? Six out of ten. <laughs> you know? Whatever. And that's the thing that, that pisses me off. So I look at these other guys and I see like, um, I saw a bunch of, I saw reviews from like the Escapist, Polygon, and I was just like, these guys are fucking dumb. And that raises the question, I don't believe in video game journalism. I think it's the facade that a lot of people use. I don't think it's real at all. Because that the sense of journalism is the um, assumption that it is represent, representing an unbiased opinion about a game um, to a, to the general public, so that they can, of course, make their own decision. Every ga every person who reviews a game, or every company that has ever like reviewed a game, is guilty of being biased towards a game. And if you don't believe me, look up your Game Informers. Like I have one in my car right now, but I. Uh, um, to further prove this point, I have a bunch of Game Informers. Like, I have it because GameStop gives it to you for free. Yeah. Um, so I'm like, oh, fuck it. Cool, whatever. Um, <clears throat> so in, in they did uh, last month's Game Informer was about uh, Assassin's Creed Unity, a game that's not even out. And they talked about, oh, this looks great. This looks cool. This is amazing. The game's going to captivate you. How can you have that opinion about a game you've never even played? It is bias. Right, and you can't help it. Well, yeah, by by the nature of a, a magazine that has to sell copies, they have ads for games. Exactly. In the magazine. Exactly. <laughs> it's um, like look at IGN when IGN gave its review of uh, Mass Effect Three. They had the fucking ads in it, and there's so <laughs> many screenshots of it. Everyone took fucking screenshots. Yeah, it, it's that like Call of Duty. Like you do, or, or like we're reviewing Mass Effect Three, and then but but before the video plays, this game, this video is brought to you by Mass Effect Three. Exactly. It's like what the fuck. <laughs> You know, and it's like it, you can't help but be biased, right? Regardless, and, and I'm sorry if that like hurts someone's feelings or whatever. I doubt we have like people from you know gaming industry Stout like Stout IGN uh, defenders. Mm, yeah, <laughs> oh dude, like fucking <laughs> who defends IGN at this point? Yeah, but and or even Machinima. I like Machinima for for two things. That's two best friends play, and <laughs> it used to be three bro team, but they're not with them, and um. Those guys that do the uh, the news, the two guys that I actually agree with, um, that who were talking about Destiny, actually, uh, only other two guys I agree with. Other than that, fuck them. Well, and and I think I think this whole review thing brings up a couple points that I wanted to make about this game. Um, <laughs> oh shit! Sorry, we forgot to say something. Minecraft did get. Um, well, I I yeah, they, they did get bought out. Uh, they, they got by Microsoft. by Microsoft, and Notch is like, <laughs> bye bye. So, <laughs> and he said he was going, yeah, sorry to jump ship real quick, but our producer's like, fucking Minecraft. Um, we did announce that last episode, though. Yeah, Just we did announce it was up in the air. They got bought out, and now fucking Notch is leaving, going to a new company, and he's being real hipster about it. He's like, oh, well, if it does well, I'm jumping ship again, if his next game. It's like, stop being a little bitch. It must be nice for you to be the kind of guy in, a, in, a, in an industry where, in the case of Destiny, yeah, it may sell a lot, but some people are going to have stupid opinions about it. Um, where you can just go, oh, I'm going to make another masterpiece, and then I'm just going to leave it. Good for fucking you, you asshole. <laughs> but that's just me. Anyway, back to so, Destiny. So, in terms of reviews, some, a couple points I wanted to, to bring up. Yeah. A lot of clauses go in when, you, when you're a publisher of a game and you have developers. 
-hmm. And it's an incentive program they create to kind of push you to make a good game. It has nothing to do with how many copies are sold. All it is is a bonus that they throw on top of the game, and it's based on meta review scores. The problem is, Destiny, while it might have been a great game, unfortunately people, I think, jumped the ship because they wanted to get their reviews out of the game early, like day one. Yeah, right. they, well, because if you have a day one review of the biggest game of all time, or the biggest know, release of the biggest time. release of, of the you know, and the, the number year, show. Yeah, I mean, if you have the first review of it, you're going to get a lot of views. You're going to get a lot of ad revenue. Because suddenly, you're the uh, trendsetter. Yeah. So, and then there's also, if you give it not too great of a review, well, now you're going to get even more views of people going, why didn't he give it a good view? Oh, conflicting review. theories. <gasps> what? <laughs> so, here, so, here's the problem is, Bungie just lost out on two point five million dollars. Well, we don't know. We don't know. We don't know if it's included. Yeah. But we do know that a lot of these publishers, uh, publishers do that kind of stuff. And if this were to happen to a smaller game, they'd be fucked. That maybe came out. That maybe really needed that money. Because Bungie doesn't need that money. But but maybe <laughs> look at them. Look at three hundred twenty-five million dollars. I think they're all, they're going to be okay. Yeah. But but the problem is, if you have this happen in journalism consistently to a smaller game that actually could have used the money. Well, they're just out $2.5 million because a bunch of idiots wanted to review a game before it was, it was ready. You just killed um, a potential change in the gaming industry. Right. And that's, that's something that um, Adam Sessler talked about. And I'm starting to realize that I probably shouldn't idolize him as much as I used to. Um, he's well-spoken. Yeah, he's well-spoken. <laughs> and one thing that he did talk about that I did find inter interesting was he said, gaming, if gaming dies or if there's a crash in the next episode... Um, it'll be because of the fact that games, and only due to the fact that games stop taking risks. In the case of this, in the case of Destiny, I mean, look at Destiny. He, the reason why Destiny got the, the, some of the, the bad uh, review scores that it did is because when people took a look at it, one, they didn't, chances are they didn't fucking beat it. If your, if your thing came out before, what, um, was it like Thursday or Friday? Uh, when Vault of Glass came out, which is the first raid, came out, then you haven't played the fucking game. And your opinion means jack shit. Because that's a part of the game. It doesn't matter right. if it took a couple days to come out. You have plenty of time to, do, to get to level 20 then, and, uh, or 25, or 26, I'm sorry, and then just wait. Then submit your review. Yeah, there was, Bungie didn't want it to open up the servers early to anybody. Who fucking cares? Deal with it. Don't, don't just go, oh, here's my review on it. This is what it is. That's fucking stupid. But the thing that, that, the reason why I respect Bungie and I like Destiny uh, is because they didn't market it as an MMO. They didn't market it as just a shooter. But when people, when reviewers who looked at it and they were like, oh, you do the same thing over and over, which, yes, I did point out, you do do. But did I say that was a bad thing, really? No, I make fun of it. Because I'm just like, that, you do that shit on any like MMORPG. Ask anybody who plays World of Warcraft how many times they did a fucking raid just to get one piece of loot. Ask them. Uh, I will debate you on this. What's up? My, well, <sighs> wording this correctly. <laughs> Take your time. <laughs> there's a... Do it slow. There's... Treat me right. <laughs> when you're doing it in, a, in an MMO like World of Warcraft, yeah. there's a specific gamer that's going to play World of Warcraft that might not be into the same um, style as a first-person shooter would be. That's correct. And I think that's where the problem is. It, I, don't, I don't know if it's fair to just say, uh, you do this in other games and it's okay. Because if you kill a bunch of guys in, in the World of Warcraft, a lot of the mindset that goes into that game is completionist. Like, I need to get all of this, and I need to farm reputation and stuff like that. To where the reason somebody would play a first-person shooter is because they're like, fuck that, I want to go kill a bunch of people. Correct. So yeah. it might just be that it didn't really nail down the correct combination of these two games. Is that a possibility? I don't think that it, it did, because it didn't market itself as a first-person shooter. Either. Right. Like it, an action first-person shooter. It didn't. What, what they marketed is they tried to create a new genre. Maybe it's not 100% set in stone right now. Maybe we have to wait until Destiny 2, um, which is going to come. Um, <clears throat> but they marketed it as a shared um, first-person shooter. 
Now, when you say shared, you're like, what the fuck? Like, no one's ever heard of that. They, what they essentially mean is you're going to see some guys here and there, right? You can do a quest with them if you want. You don't have to. Whatever. Um, or you can do a mission by yourself, okay? You can play it as a first-person shooter, but that's not all it is. It has elements of both. It's mm -hmm. not one without the other. And when you refer to completionist, that's the same thing is actually true in, in the game. Because when I hit level 20, you think, oh, well, I've learned all the skills from my class. You have not. You haven't even gotten halfway, to be honest. And there's so much more stuff that you have to get. So getting experience still means something. Still doing the raids, like you kill a guy, you get 50 experience, right? right. You need that experience. At the end of the day, you're still killing guys for experience, but you're doing other things on top of it. There's still that level of multi-progression, which really sells well with a lot of things. Like if you look at Borderlands, which is another fucking thing that pissed me off because I'll get to it. <laughs> if you look at Borderlands, you're getting gear, right? You're progressing the story, you're leveling your character up. But when you level up, you get a, no, a new skill. It's different for, what's it called? When you level up in Destiny, you can use more gear. Doesn't always mean you get another skill, okay? Up until 20. Um, <clears throat> and then, uh, then it starts to be, oh, hey, I got the upgrade for my gun, which is something that doesn't happen in Borderlands. Two guns could be identically similar, had the same amount of damage output or whatever, but they have different perks. Maybe I have two different hand cannons. This one does explosive damage, but this one, if I get headshots, reloads faster. So maybe I want that one, because the hand cannon, its reload time is like six seconds. It makes more sense to, to me. Maybe I'm a better shot. So it, it really adds that sense of customization. And I remember I was watching this video. It actually came out yesterday of um, Rev3 Games. Uh, they talked about, is Destiny a disappointment? And I thought that was such a, an awful video because you have two guys that really have only played the alpha and a little bit of the actual game. Or no, you have two guys that only played the alpha. As far as I know, they didn't mention anything about playing the, the actual full game. And then you have an, uh, another female who's just um, like asking questions about it. And some of the questions were right. Like, oh, does it have any story? Ah, the story's pretty much non-existent. At least they don't imply it to you. You really have to go out searching for it. There's a lot of story there. You just have to go searching for it. But when it came to, oh, I felt like Borderlands was more customizable, that's a fucking lie. Um, that's a complete, like, or, or more strategic because you can switch your skills on the fly. I could switch job uh, subclasses if I wanted to on the fly. Hey, maybe I'm doing a mission by myself. Like, I play Warlock. Their special ability is um, if you're a Voidwalker, shoot this little Hadouken thing that blows people up. If I'm a Sun Singer, I can... Uh, activate like this phoenix mode i get these wings and shit and one of the perks of sun singers i can revive myself if i'm doing a mission by myself that's that could be hard i'm more than likely to pay, play sun singer so i can revive myself otherwise it starts me back from the last checkpoint so if i die i'm like Psh, back alive kill these bitches but if i'm void walker fuck man I, you know i can't i die and it's over i'm done but i could do more damage at one time um, and then in there, that's just one thing. I can change every little one of those abilities. May, maybe I want Sunsinger to be more about defense. So I put all his stats more towards defensive stuff. Uh, maybe I want Voidwalker to be faster. I'll put it more towards uh, agility. That's the thing, that all that stuff you can switch. So saying that Borderlands did it better is wrong. I'm not a fanboy about Destiny, but I will tell you the fucking shit is, is, is I'm not gonna lie to you. It's, there's a clear difference. So, kind of wrapping it up, I, I, um, I'm going to announce this stuff real quick. Uh, Vault of Glass. I, my fact series completed 11 hours after its release. Mm -hmm. um, could be another day or something. I don't know, but my thing said that. Yeah. Uh, and also combined, another thing nobody who already reviewed the game could have taken into account is Combined Arms and Queen's Wrath are, are playable in the Crucible right now from the 19th to the 21st. Well, I know uh, I play Combined Arms, and what they're doing is, like, every week they're putting in, like, different, like a different game mode. Yeah. Like I wonder if the people that reviewed this one that came out knew that was going to happen. I doubt it. Because, <laughs> like, the first week was, like, this, like, bomb, or it was, like, a Relic Artifact game mode which i played where like you sit at the relic and then you you activate your little probe and then you have to defend it for a certain amount of time well combined arms isn't really it's just more of a modifier than anything mm -hmm. oh it's it's um you play on one particular level their biggest level that they have um and you literally just light people up with vehicles half the time or you stay yeah. inside well uh, <laughs> so so yeah there's these fun ones that you can play now 
yeah. I guess. Um, so I, I, again, I just I just stress that people that have already reviewed this game, it'd be kind of pointless to read a review that wasn't within like the last couple of days when things start getting released. Yeah, when you got released. like games like these take more than just two days to to review. Yeah, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna keep ranting about it. I'll just end it at this. It was marketed as a shared f- first person shooter. Which means it has elements of your MMO and it has elements of your first-person shooter. Anyone who goes, um, who tries to take a more first-person shooter approach of it, isn't really doing it right. That's like playing an action RPG and being mad that there isn't as much like crazy action. That's like being mad at Kingdom Hearts and being like, "Oh man, fucking, there's no explosions, there's no crazy action that happens." But respecting the RPG part of it, we're not so, even talking about. It. So I really want to close it as, what is your like? two-week review of it or something like that. What, what, would, what score would you give it? I don't care what rating system you want. Just make sure you um, put the denominator. I'd give it, <laughs> I wouldn't give it a 10. It's not a 10 because it's not perfect. I'd give it an 8. And I think most reviews should stick to somewhere around like an 8. It, I don't think an 8, a 9 tops. Um, What's holding it back? Um, it just, it's not the amount of the worlds. It's just more the... Um, it's just more the fact that it, some of it does feel a little empty. Like, for instance, I capped out my Vanguard points for the week. And while it's a more casual-based thing, like, I'm a hardcore gamer. So it's like, I'm like, fuck! Now I gotta, like, wait, or, you know, play Crucible, which I don't mind. I, I'm fine at Crucible. But it's like, I really wanted to just up my, my Vanguard points and stuff. That's probably it. Mm. It just feels like when you hit... There's a lot of shit to do, but when you hit that cap, then it's a little bit of waiting. Like there's a vendor that you have to get rare item or rare items for, and that acts as currency. Well, he only shows up on the weekends. So, say I've capped my points on both on Crucible and Vanguard, um, and I have all the the, uh, the coins I need. What do I do now? I'd fucking wait. That's probably the only the only gripe I have. But then again, it's a shared uh, first person shooter. It's not supposed to be like something you can grind continuously. It's slow progression. Um, or it's a, a steady progression. I wouldn't say it's slow. Steady progression. You can't just get everything in one week. So. All right. Well, that's Justin's perspective on it. I tend to side with that. I would I, not having played it from, from everything I've heard. It's been very, very, very good game. Uh, so definitely something to think about. Hopefully the reviews don't bring it down any more than they already have. Yeah. The point is, did you have fun? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So uh, that's it from the itch today. I'm Spencer. And I'm still mad. (laughs) (laughs) We'll see you next time.